morning. Um, last week during worship, I found myself thinking about what I'm going to eat when I get home and <laughs> what my week looks like. And my mind was just, it was all over the place. Um, sometimes during worship, I think we forget that it's just a moment to just appreciate what God has done. And even if he hasn't done a thing, who God has been, which is faithful. And so Lamentation 3 says, I remember, or I remember my affliction, my wandering, the bitterness and the gall, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great Lord is your faithfulness. Oh, Father, this morning, when we come into your presence, we thank you that everything changes and that we are never the same. Oh, Father, I pray that our minds, that we may call this to mind as we sing these songs. It's not a performance. It's not just to pass time. Father, we thank you, and we just want to take this time to say, you have been so good, and we are grateful. My God, I pray that you may help us to not be distracted at this time, that we may worship you, my Father, as we sing these songs. Let them really be um, coming from the depths of our hearts to say, Lord, you are so, so good, and we worship you. Father, I pray for the service, that the seeds that you plant, we thank you that you also send the rain. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Guys, you're going to have to... Uh stand and worship with us otherwise you can fall asleep and that's not this is not the place to fall asleep there's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies your body and the blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, there's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemy. your body and the blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my 
bubbles up. Come, Holy Spirit, move among us. Come, Holy Spirit, flow living water, flow living water, flow within us, flow. is alive it's breaking the darkness it's bringing the light to soften the hearts of soul your love is alive it's breaking the darkness it's winning the fire Surrounded 
but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You saturate my life. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. with our own eyes or the eyes of a man we see only what our flesh and what the enemy wants us to see but in your presence we see with 2020 vision we see you high and lifted up we see the God of the angel armies we see that there are more with us than there are with them we see your eyes, warm and full of love, looking on us. We see our Father's hands. We see our Father's hands. We see our Father's hands. So thank you for this time that you would draw us in. I think this is a really good time for, uh, for a, a testimony. Have we got that testimony? Let's do it. Let's take a seat. Woo! Good morning, church. If you came to church this morning and you haven't figured out a reason to praise the Lord yet, Gogori is our reason to praise the Lord this morning. I said to Gogori when she came in the door, I think she looks younger. <laughs> so, so Gogori, we're so excited to hear this testimony and we're going to give you some time to do it. I don't know why this one doesn't want to come on, Ryan. Yeah, let's use yours. Let's not fight for this. There we go. Thank you. Gokuri, you go. Went to Ayanda. Okay. <laughs> A very good morning, Bazalwane, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm feeling overwhelmed standing here. Um, but we just want to give God all the praises because all the honor belongs to him. Amen. Amen. I know we wouldn't have done it um, without him. I, I just loved the song that was sang here and just now. Ugutsi, this is how we fight our battles. Mm. Tina, as Christians, um, we fight our battles through prayer. Amen. 
And we just want to appreciate the church. It hasn't been easy. Bazalwane, it was difficult. At some stage, we were questioning God. You know, we were even asking ourselves, good how it goes. Uma mami, she's been a servant since the day I knew her as her child. You know, but um, why does she have to go through so much pain? You know, um, I felt at some stage that she didn't deserve the pain. I even said to God, you know what, God, I, I, I really do not like to see my mom in this pain because she was in pain. And you could see, because she's an elderly, you know, she takes pain differently from us, you know, as young people, you know, but uh, we are grateful. We are standing with her here, but it is because of your support Ooh. as well. Um, I think she has found Ife Meling Mbela with uh, Ewell Spring because um, she's been receiving calls, prayers. Um, there's a message that uh, Usamgelo wrote to the church, and I would like to read that uh, message um, in just showing gratitude. Um, you guys have been there with us in prayer. We got the strength because you guys were praying for us. Amen. Um, I just want to read that message quickly. Ayanda is calling me, but she was supposed to be here. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) But uh, before I read this message, um, can I, Pastor, quickly uh, do this song um, with the church, if Abazalwane, they know it. trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon His word through it all through To trust in God through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His word. Amen. The message reads as follows, uh, Bazalwane. Um, family, the past two months has been the most challenging yet uh, to the clan of uh, Mama Rebecca. Some days we were not even sure whether we were coming or going. Fear cramped in sometimes or crippled in sometimes. We cried a river in our little corners. We disagreed, sleepless nights ac- accompanied with never-ending teleconferences. <laughs> As we were experiencing um, our angel, our mother, Kokori, to our kids go through excruciating pain, which wanted to claim her. Her, her hearts were pierced as we were helpless, uh, feeling wounded. Our minds, whilst we watch her day in and day out, sobbing in pain. As we uh, are taking stock of these experiences, it becomes very clear to us as her children that we couldn't have managed 
to wake up every day with uh, the hope um, if it wasn't all of your amazing uh, prayers. 24 hours, uh, Abba Zalwani have been praying. Uh, the messages of hope that inspired us to continue the faith, uh, the never-ending love that we receive. I know we will not be able to mention everybody, but there's a few Bazalwanes um, that um, we just want to appreciate uh, the most. Umama Anekerabe, I know she is not with us because she's overseas. Uh, Pastor Sheldon, the Wellspring Ministry, the Esther Group, uh, the Mkondo Intercessors, and the many other saints that were standing in faith with us. My heart, or rather our hearts, are filled with tears, not tears of sorrow, but astonished by the unfailing prayers, messages, and the availability to listen. Uh, your love is humbling, Bazalwan. I'm sure we were not the best or easy to deal with at times, but your understanding and your patience for us is wow. Mm. Um, to all her friends, um, we haven't for forsaken you. Um, husbands whose wives tend to cry uh, babies. Okay, no, this one, I think she is just referring to us, but there are scriptures, Bazalwande, that uh, she has uh, written and she would love us to um, continue dwelling in Guo. Uh, James 1 verse 2, in First Thessalonians um, 5 from 17 to 19, and ending with Numbers 6 from verse 24 to 26. Um, these are the words, Bazalwane, Esizama Ukuboni Sangazo, how grateful and uh, how appreciating uh, we are. Ezabantwana Bagamam. Siambonga Gakulunkulunkulu Bazalwane. We are trusting Ukuti, she is going to continue where she has left off because she was <laughs> really missing uh, her prayers and going around the mall, distributing the books. You know, she kept saying, I said, Mama Bagit, it's still early, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, 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 because you will not believe this, Bazalwan. She was operated on, on Thursday, last week Thursday. It's not long, ne? But then uh, she just said, you know what? I am feeling strong. I just want to go to the church and greet the church. <laughs> because... <laughs> She's been missing you. <laughs> She's been missing you because uh, we would have loved her to at least stay at home for two weeks in Yana because the stitches are not yet off. She hasn't healed. But I know her spirit is strong because Amen. 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 <laughs> what I can say, the, the, the storm is over. Amen. <laughs> just, just wait here. Let's just pray for the family this morning. Let's raise your hands towards them. Yeah, if there's any family in church this morning, you come. So if you want to be part of their family, come. So, yeah. Yeah, Father, we just bring this wonderful family before you, Lord. And Lord, just now we sang a song, through it all we will learn to trust in you, Lord. And I pray that that would be their testimony, that through it all they have learned to trust you, Lord. And Lord, as Gogori just kind of uh, proclaimed that the storm is over, we want to agree with Gogori and say that the storm is over, that the pain will now go be gone and that healing will come completely in Jesus' name. And that, Lord, that the enemy will be defeated by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And as they tell this testimony, Lord, I pray that darkness will flee, that people's hearts would open to you, Jesus. But, Father, that, that what's, what this family has witnessed, what they have been through in the last couple of weeks and months, Lord, Lord, that you would erase it and they would just remember the blessing that we serve a loving, faithful God. Would you touch them all? And Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that Gogori is back in church today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Love you guys.
I think the family's had Gogori long enough and we can have her back now. So, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so we, uh, where's Hansi? Hansi, will you come and make that announcement? Is somebody else going to? Who? Fiona. Fiona's making that announcement. Oh, I'm going to need it again. Thank you. Fiona's making an announcement quickly. This is where we usually switch off in church when announcements happen. But, but just try and listen. It's, it's, um, Maybe if I get on stage and dance, you all will hear me. Woo. But um, I think I'll save you from that, Sheldon. Okay. Um, yeah, what a blessing to have you with us this morning, Gogo. Really, to hear your clap during praise and worship, that familiar sound. Well, what a blessing. Um, we started this uh, equipping track, I think, already three weeks or four weeks ago with um, chapter one repentance and we had a few people attend and they were free to ask questions and just uh, discuss what repentance is to them and why we should have repentance i think because sheldon did such an excellent teaching um i think almost a whole month we were yes yeah so the repentance um, um equipping workshop went very very well um our next one is going to be on the 16th of august so that's two weeks from, to, uh, from this Tuesday. And we're going to meet here at the church at 6 in the evening. It is a Tuesday. And our topic is going to be in Christ. Okay, so we were singing today, we're surrounded by him. But on that Tuesday, we're going to hear what it is and learn more and discuss what it does it mean to be in Christ. Um, if you are interested, you're welcome to give Kansi your name. And um, it's not too late. I know we started already, but it's never too late to, to grow in your faith and build a sure foundation. Thank you. Awesome. So if you want to be part of the equipping, um, see Hansi or Fiona um, after the service and just give your name. And this morning is our AGM service, but we're going to do that right at the end. I mean, we're just going to uh, praise and worship the Lord. Uh, that's, that's what we want to do this morning more than anything else and then get into the Word and then the AGM will be right at the end. This morning I met Tony and Lynn. Lynn, I didn't meet you yet, but I met Tony. Welcome to church this morning. And I don't know if there's anybody else that's it's your first time uh, Wellspring Ministries this morning. You thought maybe they were handing out free ice cream and you came into the building. And uh, free, free, yes, later on to Doug, I've got a little tub <laughs> so but anyway welcome welcome this morning and those of you who are watching online um i thought i just need to say that the the service on a sunday morning it's it's not made for online viewing we're really focusing on on what god is doing here so if you're watching online and you're feeling a little disconnected maybe uh come and join us in church but um you'll get the most part of what's going on in church on a sunday morning so uh, malachi are you guys ready for the children so we're going to allow the children to go to Sunday school this morning now. And, um, and then we're also going to just allow you, as part of your, part of your praise and worship, to just um, come and give your tithes and offerings to the Lord. On a Sunday morning, you know, I always bring these baskets to the front. And I usually pray over the tithes and offerings when I'm bringing it to the front. And this morning, I just said, Lord, you know, we're not a church that preaches about tithes and offerings. But uh, we, we like to say that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And that's really our heart when we give on a Sunday morning, that we are cheerful in giving to the Lord. And then our prayer is just that we are faithful stewards of what God has given us. And uh, you will hear at the end of the service, Simon's going to present the finances. Um, and if you don't understand anything Simon says, you're welcome to read it on the board at the back. Uh, the, the AGM, all the reports are on the back. Um, but this morning you will see that our, God's done amazing things with our tithes and offerings. And, um, and uh, yeah, we continue to be faithful stewards. So, yes, so feel free to stand up and come up and we're going to praise and worship the Lord further. Thank you. The storm is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Storm is over. Storm is over. Storm is over. Storm is over. Yeah. Your presence, everything changes. The storm is over. The storm is over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You quiet my soul. You bring me to my knees. 
in your presence everything changes with just, just one, one word everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same with just one word everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same Song of Songs the Lord is speaking He says come with me from Lebanon my bride from the den of lions from the mountains where the leopards prowl for you have captured my heart you have captivated me my bride with one glance of your eyes with one jewel from your necklace for how beautiful is your love my bride and how much better is your love than even wine and the fragrance of you than any spice we need to remember that it's not only us saying those words to God but it's Jesus in fact speaking to his bride that he is captivated with us which is a shocking thought that you hunger and thirst for me even as I hunger and thirst for you that you want to be with me it's one thing I desire one thing I desire only this I seek Just to dwell, dwell, dwell in heaven This will be my posture Laying at your feet Just to dwell, dwell, dwell in heaven I'll never be the same. 
you would risk everything for this moment, that you would die for this moment, that we would come close to you, that you would risk everything, and that even having saved us, you still take that risk, that your spirit calls to us and calls to us, and we can say no, we can say yes, and you wait in expectation for us to come close to you that you choose to wait instead of barging in, that you choose to wait for us to draw near to you, even though your heart hungers and thirsts for us, for our presence, even like our heart should hunger and thirst for yours. Teach us to hunger and thirst for your presence. I'm so in love with you. You're beautiful. So beautiful, I fix my eyes on you. I fix my eyes on you. You're beautiful, so beautiful, with just one look, everything changes. I'm captivated, I'll never be the same with just one look. Everything changes, I'm captivated, I'll never be the same, I'll never be. Everything changes in your presence. Everything changes in your presence. Though the seasons change, your love remains. Your love remains, though the seasons change. Your love remains, your love remains, though the seasons change. Your love remains. Your love remains, though the seasons change.
the music changes and the songs we sing we still lift our praises to our loving God and King though the music changes and the songs we sing we still lift our praises to our love
the demons, death, sickness, there is nothing that will separate us from the love of the Father, which is ours in Christ Jesus. And so when we say, bless us, Father, bless this country, bless this town, bless our families, bless this church, bless your children, we say it to a Father who loves us, and our hearts are full of expectation. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mother chosen one bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders, ashamed I hear my mocking voice, call out among the stars. For it was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is sin We soak in your love. 
We are surrounded by your presence. And in your presence, everything changes. As we go to your word this morning, you change us there too. And so we worship you with our minds, and with our hearts, with our attention. We continue to worship you with our ears. Let us be doers and not just hearers of the word. For this is worship. All God's people said amen. All right. Good morning, church. How are you all doing? Good, good. I love getting into the Word of God. And uh, so I, I always... I, my favorite part of church is not preaching, although I love, I love preaching the Word of God. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I think I get more excited about church than anybody else. Yeah, I, you can ask my family, man. I'm out the door early on a Sunday morning. Um, usually some of them haven't woken up yet. But I, I really love just coming to church and, and the body of Christ. And, you know, for me, church is such a safe place because when I come to you guys this morning, I feel like, I feel like I'm accountable with the Word of God to you guys because you know the Word of God as well as I know the Word of God. And the gifts of the, the Holy Spirit are in the church. So there's discernment and there's wisdom. And if I said something wrong... I, I'm giving you permission now. In fact, if anybody ever preaches, you can stick your hand up and you can say, hey, I don't agree with that. It's not in the Word of God. Okay. And um, so, so it's a safe place for me. And I, I, I love the body of Christ because we're together. And so this morning I'm going to be uh, just um, sharing a word called, he ain't my brother. Okay, good English. He ain't my brother. And, uh, but before we start, I just want to, I want to do an example of what it's like in the body of Christ. Because, you know, we call to intercede for each other. And Gogo Reed this morning is such a great example of us. Uh, Miles, put that scripture up for me, that Exodus 22:30. Um, Michael did such a great job with his PowerPoints. And I thought, yeah, those PowerPoints look so great. And then I realized I got four kids. <laughs> they can do these things for me. What am I thinking about? I don't have to uh, worry about this. In any case, Ezekiel 22.30 says, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. And I searched for someone in the gap in the wall, uh, to stand in the gap in the wall so that I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found none. And that's a story you can go read it in Exodus. And, and God really, I mean, this, God's heart is to redeem. He really wants to redeem. But if you don't want to meet God, He can't meet you. He's just... Man, just, I'm just looking for one man who would stand in the gap and pray for the land. And you know, if he found one man to stand in the gap and pray for the land, God would have healed that land. But he found none. So he just turned them over to their wickedness, their sin. And their sin basically destroyed them. And um, so, so this morning, I think about us standing in the gap for Gogori. In, in April, I spent some time flat on my back, uh, hurt my back, and... And I really felt the body of Christ praying for me. You guys standing in the gap for me. In fact, I think the message goes all over the world. And it, there's, there's some comfort, hey, Gorgori, in knowing that people are standing in the gap for you and praying for you. I mean, you're, you guys all felt it, hey? And it's a wonderful thing. And, and so when we talk about standing in the gap, when we talk about interceding for each other, intercession is a word that we don't... It's got such a bad rap in the church because when we think of intercession, we think of the whole night's prayer. Somebody's praying the whole night and they, that's all they do. I am not an intercessor. And if you can find in the Bible where certain people are intercessors, then bring me that scripture. But we're all called to intercede. We're all called to stand in the gap. We're all called to pray for one another. And intercession is basically this is that we make a way for that person with their problems, their issues, their sickness, their shame, their guilt, whatever it is, we get them to a place where they meet God, where their problems meet God. That's what intercession is. So I was talking to a guy one day, and he said to me, but Sheldon, I can't pray like those people. So I said to him, let me guess, you're a headline person. He's like, yeah. I said, well, most men are headline pe people. You know, we, we say what we need to say, and then we, we don't color it in. 
And I said to him, don't you think God knows that? Don't you think God knows that about you, that you're a headline person? Hey? So then, talk to God. He knows you. Give him the headlines. Isn't headlines then intercession? So long as you're trying to bring that person to a place, their, their problems or situations to a place where they meet God. That's intercession. I remember many years ago, uh, Simon and Michael's dad shared he had a car accident. And while his car is going through the air, all he said is, Lord, help. Hey? No time for long intercession or prayer there. Hey? Your car is in the air. Lord, help. And God came through for him. Hey? So I want us to do something this morning as a, as, a, as a church. I'm going to bring somebody to the front and we're going to pray for them. If you know their situation in life, I don't want you to pray for them this morning. Not, not in front. I'm going to ask at least three people to come to the front and pray for that person. But we're going to intercede for that person as in, in the body. And I want you to see how, how, to me, how easy it is to intercede for somebody. Okay. So Mel, why don't you come to the front here? I've got a mic here. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Mel's going to stand here. She's not saying a word this morning. Okay. But you're going to, we're going to pray for her as a body. Okay. And I want you to just be there and just start to pray for Mel. You don't have to pray out loud. You can pray in your own way. If you want to pray out loud, you pray. Okay? Whatever. But ask the Holy Spirit to show you, is there something specific you want me to pray for Mel? So say now he shows you, Mel's got an ingrown toenail. That's kind of gross, I know. But you just feel ingrown, just pray for that. Be obedient and just pray for that. Because when... Obedience is important. So I want you to just pray for that. But I want at least three people to come to the front, and I want you to pray for Mel. And you're going to pray for her over the mic, okay? The rest of you are going to intercede for Mel. And you're going to pray for her, and you're going to ask God to show you, is there something you can specifically pray for her? If you're watching online and you have a word for Mel, or specifically a way you're praying, just send it to Mel, okay? She's on WhatsApp. And... Uh, so let's just do that. Father, as we bring Mel before you this morning, Lord. Lord, as a body, as your body, I thank you that you allow us to stand in the gap. We can stand in the gap for our friends, our family, for people we do not maybe know. We can stand in the gap for this body. We can stand in the gap for our town, for our town's leaders. We can stand in the gap for our country. Lord, I believe we can stand in the gap for the whole world. And Lord, I thank you that you hear our prayers. And Father, when I was praying for Mel, because I knew what was happening, so I have a head start. But Lord, I just felt, Mel, I, I really just saw God, you're getting postcards in the post. And on those postcards is, is photos of places that you have been in life. And when you look at those photos, you realize but you, it wasn't just you there. God was there with you. So I pray, Father, that from this day forth, that as Mel, that Mel would always be, almost be expectant for those postcards in the post. Because any situation, whether it was past, present, or in the future, Lord, you are there with her, Lord. So, Lord, may she expect you to be in absolutely every situation that she goes through. May she just turn to find you in those situations, Lord. Even if she just says, Lord, help, Lord, may she know that you are there, Lord. I pray that the truth will be settled in her heart and her mind today that the Lord is always with me. He always has been and he always will be. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else? Remember that you praying to Mel now. This is not a impress the church moment or anything like that. This is for Mel. I'm going to ask you to do it on the mic so it goes up live. My Father God, you are holy, you are faithful, you're kind, you're gentle, you're compassionate slow to anger. My father, I stand here with Mel. You know her inside out. You made her. You created her. 
Her days were written in your book before she was even born. Every good thing she did, everything that pleased you, you saw. My Father, while we stand here, please restore her to her original identity that you had planned for her. My Father, and in the name of Jesus, we break every lie that was ever spoken over her life that is not in line with what you've ordained and spoken over her. And thank you, Lord, that we can praise you. Thank you that you, we know that you say nothing, nothing in heaven or earth, in hell, under the earth, no sickness, no death, no height, nothing can separate us from your love. My Father and your also say, when you abide in me, my Father and I will abide in you, and nothing will be able to snatch you from my hand again. May the Lord bless and keep you, my Father. You say that you hear every tear that drops. You know how pain, you know what we're going through. I speak healing in the name of Jesus over your broken heart because Jesus said, I have come to heal your broken heart. I have come to heal your broken mind, your broken soul, your broken body, and I am giving you everything new so that you can have a life of abundance. Amen. Mel, I remember a couple of years ago when um, you were coming home from work and somebody tried to cut you off, possibly hijacking, and you were in an accident and how the Lord told you in that split second to loosen your seatbelt and how you were flung into the back of your vehicle and that saved your life. And just like in that moment, God showed you what to do, you have that ability again to hear him. So thank you, Lord, that you guided Mel. That was how she's still with us today. But Lord, at that time, something happened. And Lord, whatever it was, I ask you now to fix it. Heal in her heart what happened that day. And let her revel in the fact that you were with her in that moment. That you guided her and she heard you. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that she has a future in you and a future in being a blessing to her family and to others. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Father God, we thank you <coughs> that we can bring Mel before you. Lord, we stand together in the gap with the Lord. And you said, where two or three are gathered, whatever we ask and we believe, it shall be done. So Lord, when you died on that cross, Lord, not only for our sins, but also for our sickness. And you said, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. So believe that by your blood, she is healed, Lord. Because you said it, we believe it, and we stand on your word that nothing will come against the world prosper because we stand in your word and we believe that you are a healer, that you've died on the cross for our sins, for our sickness. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mel. So maybe you were sitting there this morning and you're like, oh, I, I wanted to go pray, but Auntie Dugman jumped up in front of me. Or, 
It's okay, you can go afterwards. Nobody stole your place or stole the word. Go pray for Mel afterwards, or you want to phone her and pray for her. Um, but to me, that's what the body of Christ looks like. That's what we're doing here. You know, we sent out our little advertisements this week, and we, uh, one of them was a Lego block. Eh? We're all a Lego block. And you might just think, I'm just a Lego block. But you're part of something bigger. A Lego block on its own is not very impressive especially if you stand on it in the middle of the night. Okay, it hurts. But it's part of something bigger, and we are part of something bigger. We're part of something beautiful, church. And uh, the body of Christ is just, a, to me, a beautiful thing. And uh, so, so it's our AGM service, and we look back on what the Lord has done in this last year, and uh, it's not always so much fun looking back in a COVID year, um, this is the most chairs we've put out since 2020, March 2020. Hey? Uh, we used to have 300 chairs in church. Hey? Isn't it amazing? Um, but, um, but God's doing some amazing things. And, and I, I always say I'm so fortunate to be able to be in the position I am because I see what God is doing in the body of Christ. And I see what he's doing through the body of Christ through you guys and you guys meeting with each other and praying and interceding and helping. And, you know, as the body of Christ, we felt in 2020, um, and, and you will hear just now when Simon does the finances, but, uh, and I've shared this testimony many times before, but in 2020, uh, when we f- hit that first lockdown, you know, that five-week one that was where nobody was allowed to leave their house except to put the trash out and, uh, the trash guys never got uh, COVID, but apparently we would if we went out for too long. But in that time, the church finances really took a, a, a dip here. So I was walking around my garden trying to get the church finances to meet God. Hey? And I was talking to God about it. And, and you know, God doesn't solve problems the way we solve problems. Hey? So God's solution to our whole financial problem in the church was, hey, Sheldon, Open a COVID account so people can give to help people who are battling during COVID. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I just walked around the garden. You didn't hear me. The church needs some finances. I'm, you know, they, we're getting paid in drips and drabs. I need to feed my family. This is a big problem, Lord. Open a COVID account. So I, I, I think we got on, the elders got on, got on uh, Zoom and we, we, I shared with them, let's do it. So we opened a COVID account. So what happened was if you wanted to give towards COVID because we started feeding people through COVID and we, we, we're still continuing to do that. We uh, opened this COVID account and we said to the Lord, Ach, we said to, to the church, if you want to give to COVID account, put COVID as your reference. If you want to give tithes and offerings, give, say, tithes and offerings. And I um, figured people can't spell tithes because some people just go t, t and O. And, um, but... Um, we, we did that. We opened this COVID account, and uh, you won't believe it. Within the first week, the COVID account jumped by 60,000. But so did the church finances. If you're a finance guy, you know, maybe that wouldn't have been the advice you would give, but God gave that advice. And I want to tell you that as a church, we have not looked back. God has been so faithful, and, and as a body, we've been able to reach so many people. I mean... Um, there's over 1,500 children get fed every day in the holidays. Hey? Think about how many meals that is every day in the holidays, seven days a week in Iswepi, 1,500 children. This last holiday, they realized that the older people were hungry too, so parents started showing up to get food with the children. And so we ran out of food a little bit faster. But God knows, hey? But we're a body and we're part of something bigger and beautiful. So if you sit here in church this morning and you just feel like you're a Lego block, I just want to say to you, you're not just a Lego block. You're part of something bigger and beautiful. So Galatians 6, 2, uh, Miles, on my... You know, uh, oh, I think I'm doing one, two, three. Hey, can you guys read that? So it says, Dear brothers and sisters, if anyone... If any believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. Funny how we just want to kick them out of church, but anyway. 
and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Okay? I want you to remember that when you're helping somebody, this is not my sermon, but it's in there. If you're helping somebody who has fallen in sin, there's a scripture there for a reason. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Okay? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I don't wear it though. Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. If you think that you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. <laughs> I didn't say it. The Word of God said it. <laughs> but it says that we need to bear one another's burdens. And I, I, I can give you the Greek this morning. I've got it in my notes. I actually even went on Google to how to pronounce the Greek words. Okay, I was going to impress you this morning. But it's basically that we need to carry one another's burdens. We are to carry one another's burdens. What does that mean, Sheldon? What kind of burdens are we talking about? Well, any burden, heaviness, somebody's got a heaviness in their heart. We stand in the gap and we pray for them. Somebody doesn't have food, we jump in and feed them. I've been fed by people in this body when we never had food. Somebody fed me. Somebody has a financial situation. Man, if you can help, help. We're supposed to carry one another's burdens. There's a little story. Is that picture ready? There's a little story. Um, this one. He ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. Does anybody know about this picture? Anyway, there was a similar picture going around on Facebook about it being a Japanese little boy carrying his brother, and it was in the Japanese. Anyway, my wife and I did a fact check while I was driving the other day, and that wasn't, it's not a true story. But this is a true story. He ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. And the story goes about, uh, let me go to my notes here. The story goes about a young, a young boy, and um, he arrived at Boys Town back in, we're talking back in uh, 1918, okay, so many, many years ago. And um, he arrived at Boys Town, and he had polio in, in, I guess, both legs, and he was in braces. And so getting up and down the stairs was a little bit difficult for him. And... Um, so the older boys would carry him up and down the stairs. And one day, Father Flanagan, who was um, in charge of Boys Town, said to one of the boys, um, is he not heavy? And this was his response. He ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. And I think, what an amazing response. Because I want to ask you this morning, if we have to stand here this morning and carry Mel's burden with her, was it heavy? Was it heavy? We might feel a heaviness because our hearts go out to them, but it's not heavy to carry one another's burdens. Unfortunately, COVID's done this thing to, to the church where we're all drawn into our own little worlds. We've, we've pulled very, very close. I have some friends that are not so close anymore because everybody's on their own mission. In fact, in South Africa at the moment, I think we're a little bit in survival mode, hey? We're in a, everybody's trying to figure out how they can get electricity and fuel prices gone up and it's just, everything is ridiculous and we're in survival mode. And so, so when we're going to survival mode, it becomes about me, myself and I. And so we don't actually carry one another's burdens anymore, but we're supposed to carry one another's burdens. The Holy Spirit has gifted the church with the gifts of the Spirit. You can go read them in 1 Corinthians 12. I'm not going to read them this morning. But the gifts is not, the gifts is not, I, I didn't get a dose of the gifts and God said, Sheldon, I'm going to give you all the gifts, you minister to the church. He didn't do it to the worship team on a Sunday morning. Yes, they have gifts, but it's, it's not just for them either. It's for the whole body, the whole body, the gifts are sitting here this morning. You don't get to see what I see. I'm standing up front here looking at you guys. The gift says, yeah, this is a wonderful thing. So we were given those gifts to give. So you use the gifts that God has given you to carry one another's burdens. That's what we do. Matthew um, 22, 22, 37 to 40, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. 
The second is equally important. Listen, the second is equally important. It's second, but it's equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commands. So we are called to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We cannot let our situations around us at the moment, church, stop us from loving one another. When we look back on what God has done, we're going to be grateful and thankful for what God has done in the body. But we're not going to stay there, church. We're going to go bigger and better. We're going to reach more people. We're going to touch more people. We're going to serve more people. We're going to love more people in 2022, which we're halfway through. This is not just a New Testament thing, by the way. It was in the Old Testament too. So look at, let's look at uh, Deuteronomy. Um, I'm putting it on the board so that you all have the same version. We're reading out of the NLT this morning. And it says, But if there are any poor Israelites in your towns when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Instead, be generous and lend them whatever they need. You can ask yourself this morning, Lord, am I tight-fisted and hard-hearted? I can tell you now, it's very easy to get hard-hearted. I wear that t-shirt too. You can ask um, Simon and Khansi, we, we're at the church office every day, and we're always getting people who are just trying to get a quick meal. And they've always got a story, and I know they're lying to me, and my heart sometimes my heart sometimes gets hard towards them, and I'm like, no, go fly a kite on a busy highway. <laughs> I want to say that. I don't say it out loud. <laughs> but if I just want to say it, it's the same thing, isn't it? But my heart does get hard. But yet we serve a God... Do you guys know you can't outgive God? And I'm not talking finances. I'm talking about any gift that God gives us. You give of your time, you cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. Kristen and I have tried. We lost that battle. Because once again, God's not good at math. Hey? One of my favorite stories, just because it's in uh, the same... Uh, Chris and I felt we had to buy one of the ladies in our church groceries. That was when you could buy a bag of groceries for 50 rand. Okay, it's like back in the 70s. No, not really. It was in about 2000 something. We, we, we bought this lady groceries. And we, we really just gave it to her as a thing of obedience. So we gave her this bag of groceries. She obviously was going to eat what we like because we bought the groceries. Gave it to her and and thought nothing of it. A couple of days later, oh, Chris and I were going to go to America after that to visit her parents. And uh, we get a knock on the door, open the door, and somebody's staying at the door with 500 US dollars for us. Um, exchange rate was 10 to 1 back then. So that's 5,000 Rand, okay, if you want to convert it. We gave 50, church. God hit that calculator wrong. Because when he gave back, it was just, in an abundance. I don't think he has just one zero on his calculator. I think it's like three. Okay, when he pushes it, it's... I'm not saying go give everything you own now. It's not like the lotto. It doesn't work like that. Just be obedient. Be willing to be used by God. But don't be hard-hearted and tight-fisted towards them. Instead, be generous and lend them whatever they need. And he goes on to talk because, you know, uh, in those days, they, they would, in the seventh year, they would write off all debt. All the Israelites, if an Israelite owed you money, you would write off that debt. So if somebody came to borrow money from you in the sixth year, you're like, uh, I don't know if I want to give to you now because next year I have to write this off, so I'm really not going to see this money. That's, don't be hard-hearted and tight-fisted. So we just continue to give, and as a church, we're going to continue to give when people knock on the door. Trust me, some people, I send them on their way because I know they do rounds. I, I give them food, yeah, and then I watch from my office window and I see them begging on the next street, so I know they've just got a little routine that they do. And so I'm trying to encourage them. I, I ask them now, are you givers or takers? Because we're supposed to be givers. Are you givers or takers? And I've shared this story in church before. Back in 2020, I had a couple of guys arrive at the church and I still sat with them out there and I said to them, guys, I'm going to give you food today. What are you going to give to God? 
And they immediately thought, I'm asking for something back. I said, no, 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 not me, not the church. What are you going to give back to God? And they both just looked at me. Didn't understand what I was asking. I said, guys, what do you have to give? And the one guy was like, I've got hands. I said, I think you're getting it. What are you going to give? He's like, there's a gorgo down the road. Her vegetable garden is an absolute mess. I'm going to go clean her vegetable garden for her. You know, I never saw that guy again. He never came back and asked for food again. And I think it's because he gave and God did something in his life. Maybe it opened a door, but he, he wasn't just a beggar anymore. Now he was a giver. We're a body. We givers. We give to each other. To carry one another's burdens is not heavy. It is not heavy for us. To stand in the gap, to intercede is not difficult for us. You know, sometimes you're talking to someone and they say, please pray for me. You're like, I'll pray for you. And you both turn around and walk away. You know how often you forget to pray for that person? So this is what I do now because I know I'm going to forget. Okay? I just say, can we pray now? If we're in the middle of pick and pay, we'll pray now. If we're standing, sitting, wherever it is, let's pray now. I'm going to pray for your situation now. I'm going to try and intercede for you in a way that we can bring your problem to an intersection where it meets God. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what we're called to do for one another. Nobody in this body this morning is exempt from that. We sang such a beautiful hymn here this morning, and I, I thought, if there's anybody sitting in this church that feels worthless this morning, I want you to know the truth is that Jesus died for you. That even though your sin put him on the cross, he died for you and he has set you free. If you accept him. If you haven't yet, I encourage you to come and meet Jesus. Okay? Well, well on earth, not... Um, Acts 11, 22, 27 to 30. How's those transitions? Eh? None of it was my idea. During this time, some prophets traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them, named Ag Agabus, stood up in one of the meetings and predicted by the Spirit that a great famine was coming upon the entire Roman world. This was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius. So the believers in Antioch decided to send relief to the brothers and sisters in Judea, everyone giving as much as they could. This they did entrusting their gifts to Barnabas and Saul to take to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. That's how a church responds to a prophetic word. We're like, okay, we're going to give. We're going to give as much as we can, we're going to give. I love that. Imagine you give and you don't even know who it's going to. You're just like, Lord, we're going to trust that whatever we give today is just going to grow and it's going to be big. Is there more? No, I read the whole thing. One of my favorite little stories is one time that we as a church, I, I announced, this was also back in early 2000s. God's done other stuff since then. But um, um, we announced in church that I'm going to be going to Mozambique. I was going to show some American guys some of the ministry we had done there. And we said, if you, I'm going to be going past Heidi Baker's orphanage. And if you want to give some clothes to the orphanage, just bring it. Man, there was about eight or ten black bags of clothes. And, and I point there because that's where they were, okay? And uh, I loaded them in the combi, and off I go to Mozambique. This is before WhatsApp and all those kind of things, so Heidi Baker didn't know I was coming, hey? So anyway, that's the first place I stop. I find her. She's in the office with all their people. There's a whole lot of kids playing outside, and I remember um, she walked outside, and she said, thanks for the clothes, and she looked at the children, and she said, um, Open the combi and bring all those clothes inside. And I thought, yeah, that was weird how she just did that. That's not what I expected from Heidi Baker. Anyway, the kids carried the clothes in. And um, I obviously stayed there and visited for a while because she said to me afterwards, do you know why I asked those children to bring in clothes? In the clothes. And I said, no, wow, that was kind of weird. Why did you make them do it? And she said, no, because those children arrived at our orphanage this morning. They were playing outside. I had them play outside and they were to pray, sit and pray there for clothes because we didn't have any clothes for them. I thought, wow, God, you're like a couple of steps ahead of us. 
And we thought we were being cool giving clothes. Like, who brought those kids' clothes? Not the guy with the white combi from South Africa. They had prayed and asked God for clothes, and they're like, here it is. Hey, how cool is that? That's why I don't think we can ever be hard-hearted and tight-fisted, church, because God's ahead of us. And the only thing that's going to stop God being ahead of us is our disobedience. So we don't want to be tight-fisted and hard-hearted, even if things get tough, times get tough, church. Okay. You can either even bring your tithes and offerings in a two-liter petrol can if you want. We, we take petrol. We have a generator running. That was a terrible joke. Some clown's going to do it next week, I can tell. Huh? What did you say there? Yeah, just bring it in a Coke bottle, then, <laughs> then we can keep that as well. So, Reduce, reuse, recycle. So, um, yeah. Do you guys get the message? I mixed it up, so <laughs> I had like this little point system going, and anyway, it's all messed up now. But um, you get the idea, church. We're a body. This, this is what excites me so much about church. And when I look at our AGM and what God is still going to do, it's going to be amazing. So I'm going to close this word in prayer, which I didn't open in prayer, but God's, God loves me anyway. And um, yeah, Father, this morning we, we come to you as a body, and I thank you, Lord. We might just be a Lego block, but we're part of something bigger. And we certainly want to, we certainly want to be used by you, Lord. Lord, you have called Wellspring Ministries for something very specific in this town. To, to reach people, to touch people, um, to touch children, and I swear, be, wherever it is, Lord. Um, but I pray, Lord, that everybody would feel like that they are placed in this congregation by you, Lord, and that we are built into something beautiful by you. We are your body, Lord. May we be a part of your body. May our hearts never be hard. May we never be tight-fisted. May we never be too lazy to pray and intercede May we be willing to give of our time. And Lord, I pray that we wouldn't forget this word, especially not the scriptures that come out of your Bible. And may they be truth to us and may they set us free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Big breaths. Now we're going to uh, do the AGM. Do we have to pass those clipboards around? Sorry, this is what we're doing this morning. Once a year, we just do our AGM. We have to buy law um, because, you know, we don't just have churches anymore. Now, a church needs a constitution, and uh, then you have to have an AGM. And we're going to be very quick. It's going to be like five minutes, and then we Simon, <laughs> and then uh, we're going to have some tea and coffee on that side. But um, if you're not a member and you're just totally inquisitive. Please stay. Nobody needs to leave at this stage, okay? Um, but um, if you have signed membership, um, you are allowed to vote. And uh, yeah, I just want to tell you something, some things that we've done in the last year um, as a church. Um, we used to have the Asagai Revival Center outside of town uh, the, where we used to have youth camps or any camp. And then we had the mission school there. And we hadn't used it in a couple of years um, for 12 months of the year, we'd probably only use it for a month and a half of the year, and, and uh, really came to a point where we were asking God, what should we do with it, and there's, there's a lady in church this morning that came and interceded in the church one day, and just asked me if she could pray, she sat more or less in the back there where Jason's sitting, and she, she prayed, and she prayed the whole day, and at the end of the day, she didn't know what was going on in the church, and what the questions we were asking as a leadership, and at the end of the day, she came to me, and she she just laid it down. This is what the Lord is saying to you, to the church, and this is what you need to do with Asagai Revival Center. In fact, her words were, God sê die kerk met die ark verkoop. Is her words. And I'm like, okay. We're going to be obedient. So we put it on the market, and it was within two months um, the ark was, was sold. Um, so we don't have Asagai Revival Center anymore, uh, but we don't feel like uh, we can't do the work that God has called us to do anymore because we don't have a building. We believe that God can continue to do whatever he's been doing with us. Um, 
we just um, don't have that building space anymore. Uh, I was sitting on the beach in 2021, and God said to me, Sheldon, um, and, and we will fix this building, by the way. We just have to fix those box gutters before summer. But um, uh, God said to me, um, don't put money into building, put money into people. Equip people. So as a congregation, we are focused on equipping people, and that's why what Fiona announced just now, we believe that's going to grow. If that was one announcement today. We believe that there's gonna be, it's going to be going on and on and on. So we're really excited about equipping the body to do more work because um, uh, that's what the body of Christ does. We equip others to do the work. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to do the AGM. Is everybody ready? We're going we're gonna to go through this pretty quick. So, oops, I need my glasses now because... Have you ever taken the newspaper and done this to a photo on it? Am I? I'm not the only one. Gisli, have you done it? You guys have done Hallelujah. I was telling my family that I did that to the Excelsior the other day. I wanted to look at a photo, and I went like that on it. And I thought I was such an idiot, and they laughed at me, but apparently I'm not alone. So if anybody from the Excelsior is listening in a digital form, it would be great. So... So these are the minutes of the, we, we're obviously looking at, at um, 2021 and uh, what went on in 2021 and I officially have to welcome you all to the AGM. Do you feel welcomed? Awesome. <laughs> That's great. And then obviously there's a few apologies of people who cannot be here. Um, that will be written on the list and if you're watching online um, because you couldn't be here this morning, you are more than welcome to um, just send someone an email and tell her that you have watched the AGM. Oh, is that yours? Oh, don't put, that's for, for Simon. So, yeah, it's best that Simon tells you about the finances and not me. So, I'm as good at finances as God is. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. All right, and then uh, can I have a motion for new members to be able to vote? Anybody? Uh, bad news. Sorry, Michael. I saw you too late there. You can get on the next one. Okay. And then, um, and can I propose that the minutes from the uh, 2019 or 2020 be read? Sorry? It's taken as read, yes. Sorry, Michael, once again, too slow. Vincent in the front, yes. Yeah, so. um, and then can I propose that the 20... 21 reports. Michael, this is your chance. Be taken as read. Michael, thank you very much. Okay. And then um, this is where I get to nominate the elders as uh, I get to nominate the elders, which is uh, Pushy and Ronnie Chetty, Dion and Simon Hreling, Michael and Leon Curl, Pete and Corin Nibanez and, and Dagmar West. And then anybody but those people can second that as their elders. Thank you, Delia. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, um, if, you, if you haven't read the, the reports, please go and read them at the back of the church. We, really, we put them up a couple of weeks before the AGM, and we really uh, consider them to be read. But we will probably leave them up a little bit longer, hey, Simon. And all our finances are there. We believe we have to be absolutely transparent there. So, um, yeah. And then I'm going to ask Simon to just come and do the finances in... Simon is like major finance brain and he's going to try and make it that the rest of us can understand. Are you are going to do it from up there? Or? No, 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 don't do it from up there. It looks very uh, serious from up there. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Testing? Okay, awesome. Uh, firstly, I just want to apologize. i um, a logician by nature, which I tend to see the world in figures and patterns. Not everyone is so inclined, um, but I'll try and keep this to the principles of KISS. Keep it stupid simple. <laughs> okay, also I tend to uh, ramble on rather quickly, so Sean's asked me to please talk slowly so that everyone can understand, um, although I'll try not to bore you guys to a slow and painful death. All right, um, please note this is a purely a summary um, if you want the detailed financials, they are on the backboard. You're most welcome to read them. Um, if there's any queries, you're most welcome to speak to me, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
All right, let's get the first. Oh, what's wrong with that one? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so basically, um, sorry, I tend to use word basically a lot. My, my, my computer teacher hated that. Um, <laughs> um, the auditor's report basically states that based on the nature of the organization, the auditors are happy with this content to be presented as it is. Um, so there's nothing funny. We're not lying to you guys or anything like that. All right, first slide. I'm gonna, there's only three slides per company. I'm trying to keep it very simple. Okay, we're just going through the balance sheet. Um, you'll basically see that there's a huge movement in our land and buildings. Um, we did not go out and buy new buildings. Um, it was basically a, a, a revaluation re done on our current property. And you can see that where we were sitting at 3.7 million, we're now at almost 16 million for the same, for the same building. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, basically, accounts receivable slightly higher. Our bank is slightly lower, but uh, we're doing well for our bank. Um, you can see we've been paying a little bit of money against the loan. Some good news is that, um, well, a preview for next financial year, that loan is now paid off in full. Uh, okay, accrued expenses went up slightly. We actually got an advanced payment on some of the rental that we actually um, are due to receive. We just received it a little bit early. So that's why that jumped so high. Um, accounts payable more or less on par and the tax payable. We're now re renting out Doxodeo, which means Doxodonta, Dox Dox the high school. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately tax, uh, rent incurs tax, oh, but it is such as the case. Okay, um, that's boring. Let's go to the income statement. Okay, so the income statement. Um, now this is, look, I'm a corporate financial manager, so this does not make sense on why. <laughs> um, basically the bottom line is you'll see that um, we've made a slight loss, but if you then take a look at how much money we've spent on outreaches this year and for last financial year, in the two years that we, we've been suffering from um, the COVID, the shutdown, most companies went bankrupt. We were giving money away for free. <laughs> and that as a financial manager, no, how can we giving stuff away for free? <laughs> Sorry, I am tight fisted. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> okay, um, just beyond that, I've just broken down. Um, I've separated some of the, the other expenses, the ones that, that are major. Um, it's pretty much um, on par. The rent is basically for the buildings, donations we received, other income is petty, um, the administrative costs of running the company, pastoral salaries are on par as are other salaries. Um, I've spoken about the outreach, financial costs, depreciation on the buildings, and then the taxes that is now due this year, which was not due in the previous financial year. Okay. Um, now we get, we get something interesting, the statement of cash flows. Okay, so this is basically how much cash we actually built during the year. Bottom line, you can basically see that um, we have lost a little bit of cash here. Uh, uh, we have used up a little bit of cash resources. Um, Basically, you go. Base, you start off with your net profit. You add back the depreciation. You add back the provisions, the finan financial costs. These stuff that you didn't really pay for. Um, you can see that there's a movement in our debtors' payments, a movement in our creditors' payments, both minuscule. Um, no movement in our assets this financial year, and um, we ha the fa movement of financial activities is basically us basically paying back the loan. So nothing significant in this company, um, but I must say that overall, Wellspring is, despite um, giving all the money away, they never actually, uh, 
went into a overdraft. They never actually, I mean, from a company background, with the interest rate being so cheap, most companies were saying, oh, money is cheap. Let's get loans now. That's basically why, why were the interest rate is good. We never went that way, and we survived. And I give God the, all the glory. Okay, let's just go into key bar then. Um, income statement, or oh, um, balance sheet. Um, nothing much to mention there. Basically, um, equipment went slightly down this year. Okay, by the way, if you haven't noticed, green is last year, brown is this year. Just so that you know, if you want to look at the graphs. Um, nothing much happening in our debtors. It's slightly increased. Stock increased again. Uh, also a bit higher. Um, the bank has gone slightly higher. And our account payables are relatively on par. Uh, income statement. Okay. You'll see that the audited financials are a little bit more detailed than this. But basically, we've just sort of got our sales and our cost of sales. Um, if you guys know what gross profit is, that's the top line. Um, so we're definitely not making a loss on any of our actual sales. Doesn't mean we're making a massive prof mass doesn't mean we're charging a huge markup on it either. Um, okay, then donations. This year, no donations um, because they're now standing on their own two feet. Um, no other income. Admin expenses on par. Salaries have actually been reduced. Um, and then depreciation on on the equipment on par with last financial year. Um, the net profit, so the 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 top the bottom line, uh, we made a without any donations, we basically made a profit of twenty seven thousand. And a year in a year another year of COVID, which is great. I mean that that is quite a quite amazing. Okay, then cash flow. Cash flow report. Um, we didn't. We had a huge movement in stock in the previous financial year. We were pretty much just selling everything we had. This financial year, it's not so um, uh, so great. Um, so we reduced our debtors. Basically, creditors relatively on par, and not much in the way of building um, buying equipment this year. So this year there was a net increase in our cash flow of ten thousand. So we got ten thousand more money in our pockets. Okay. Uh, last company. Sorry, I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible. I don't want to bore you. Uh, this is the Arc. This is the last year we're running a full year. That. This is the this is the last year we're running a full year for the Arc. As Sheldon has mentioned, we have since sold it. Okay. The balance sheet. Um, land buildings is relatively on par. We sold a small amount of equipment, which is why it went down slightly. Loans, receivable, went down slightly. Uh, we got paid. Accounts receivable, slightly higher. Um, cash at bank resources went up. Um, accrued expenses, um, relatively on par. And as uh, accounts payable, we don't owe a, a single cent to anybody at the end of this financial year for the ARC, which is awesome. Okay, income statement. Tithes and offerings, uh, relatively on par with previous financial year. As Sheldon and said, you can see we've had very few bookings um, this year, no bookings at all. Um, Donations received. So in reality, the ARC's been living on donations and tithes at the moment. Um, rent received and rent, but it's very minuscule. And then other income, also not that great. Um, administrative expenses. The majority of that expense is electricity. So running the place is quite uh, costly. Um, repairs and maintenance. Um, insurance. Salaries and wages, and then outreach again with the with the depreciation of the equipment and the buildings. Um, cash flow. 
Um, even though that it's so costly, it, we haven't actually gone negative. We've actually had an additional 47,000 Rand in the bank. Um, basically, uh, we've reduced our debtors to less than nothing. We've reduced our creditors and not much in the way of um, assets were purchased. So that is the financial report. I uh, told you I wouldn't really keep it too long. Um, but I must say that, like I said, we have been giving a lot. And yet, with all the giving that we've been giving, um, we are definitely in a better position than we should be. Um, we have not taken loans to survive these two years, even though these are the worst two years that has ever that we have had in a long time. And our cash flow, despite um, these two years being so bad, we now basically we have been in a better cash flow position than we have actually been before COVID. Um, so I just want to give God all the glory for that as well. All right. I take it that you, as can I just get a motion that someone has read the audited financials? Okay, Simon, sound like an auctioneer. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, if you're like me and you just saw the pictures and you thought that's great, nice artwork, Simon, uh, you have any questions, you're more than welcome to go read them and then you're more than welcome to ask Simon or Simon or somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, we, we're going to spend some time. Oh, have you, has everybody signed the, if you're a member, have you signed the, the uh, membership register? Has it gone this side? No, it hasn't. Uh, Simon, when you're done, if it can go to Auntie Judy and Mrs. Brackwell too. Thank you. So, thanks. All right. Well, church, thanks for sitting through the AGM. I know that's like, uh, anyway, but we have to do it, and so now we've done it. I think the last, uh, last year we did it live, and then the year before we did it quickly online. So, um, but we're thankful that we are not doing those things anymore. Let's just stand, and I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're going to go and enjoy some tea and coffee that side if you want to. And uh, yeah, Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Um, Lord, we want to just declare that you are a loving Father, a faithful Father. And with that knowledge and truth, we go into this week, and we thank you, Lord, that we are not alone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.